Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be talking about how AMC can squeeze infinitely, the link between Citadel and UBS, how we can increase the margin for short and make it difficult for them, and many more in this video. So make sure you guys watch until the end. Now, straight away, we're taking a look at this. So AMC, if the short squeeze happens, the stock can go practically to infinity. Short have to borrow the stock, and if there's no more stocks to borrow, they can't deliver. So brokers must buy the stock at any price. There's no solution to this unless shorts are liquidated. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this back is this is from AMC, and this was said from the very start at 2021. And the reason why I'm talking about this right now is we can see AMC today, we are currently down 9% sitting at the price of 365 with three and a half hours left before market close. And again, what we're seeing is the suppression coming in, the momentum and the pressure coming in for AMC again, as we see the price are actually going down and we're sitting there sitting at 366. But what we have to understand is that for AMC, the risk it poses for these hedge funds and short sellers is the fact that short squeeze can make the stock pretty much go with an infinite amount of price. There is no cap, there is no ceiling. If everyone's willing to hold on to their shares, the price can be bought at 100,000. But if no one's willing to sell 100,000, the price can go to a million, etc. etc. And remember, it's the fact that the shorts have to buy the stock they have to buy the real stock of you when the squeeze happens and that's what they are afraid they are afraid of the fact that if everyone were to hold their stock prices if everyone were to um hold out a hundred thousand hold out a million then they will have to pay 10 million etc etc they will have to pay an extremely high price and the shorts and hedge funds are aware of that again just like what we've seen here remember that this was the foundation that was set from the very beginning from 2021 and everyone knows that the retail knows that the hedge funds and the short sellers knows that that's why they continuously try to suppress the price of AMC now to obviously make you panic and make you sell your shares. Because if you are able to sell your shares now, they don't want to have to worry about continuously splashing and wasting more money to keep the price suppressed. Instead, in terms of the price actually going up, and then they'll have to cover at the price you want them to cover at, whether that's a thousand, whether that's ten thousand, whether that's a hundred thousand or a million. Now, comment down below what price do you want the hedge funds to be uh, covering at? What price are you guys willing to sell when you see the AMC? price go to that and but what price do you guys have in mind that you want to sell them at and i thought that it's important that we bring it here and the more reason is because the suppression that's happening right now is very understandable if we take a look at everything that's happening so recently we've seen what happened with evergon about in terms of liquidations and how collaterals are going to zero for these hedge funds and short sellers you can see three of the institutions blackrock hsbc and ubs were the largest buyers of evergon debt now one of them has a massive uh, affiliation with AMC, obviously being UBS. If we take a look at what's happening with the other two, BlackRock is currently selling Chinese office space at 30% discount. We have HSBC trying to get swap and loan data hidden. But now the biggest thing is obviously with UBS. Now everyone knows that UBS acquired Credit Suisse and Credit Suisse was someone that was very big in terms of the swaps of GME and AMC, which is ultimately what led them to the bankruptcy and needing to be acquired by UBS. Now, if we take a look at what the link between Credit Suisse and Citadel and UBS, is that Citadel put in a bid to acquire Credit Suisse China. Citadel Security LLC made a non-binding offer for Credit Suisse Security Venture in China. This makes Citadel the only global financial firm to submit a bid for this venture. So this particular bid obviously has a lot of suspicion. The reason for this is because of multiple reasons. Now, already when they acquired the bid, there was already bad news about Evergrande. It was said that Evergrande was going to be liquidated. It just wasn't a date that was given. And so going into a business venture in China right now would already be risky, especially when the counterparty UBS here being someone that's already affiliated with Evergrande. But what we're here to talk about is obviously Credit Suisse is someone who holds a massive part of swaps of GME and AMC. And again, the same with UBS because they acquired Credit Suisse. And so if Credit Suisse can no longer handle it, and we know that they're able to hold on to it right now because they are on the reverse repo list so that they're able to hold this. But once that goes to zero and we're seeing that price and we're seeing the reverse repo going down, then it will obviously cause massive problems if Credit Suisse were to cover their AMC shares and GME shares. So one of the talks we talked about was the, the fact that Citadel put in a bid to acquire Credit Suisse China was to help them out with the shorts, help them out with capital because 
Citadel are also extremely affiliated with AMC Shorts. I'm sure everyone knows that. And so they are trying to help their fellow short sellers to make sure that the shorts don't get covered because if Credit Suisse were to be over and have to cover AMC, it's not just Credit Suisse that will get affected. Citadel, Virtue, any other firms that was heavily shorting AMC will also get affected. And that's why they're doing that. If we take a look at more, remember that Citadel only bought up Credit Suisse China and there are still plenty of other you know, Credit Suisse operations, obviously being in UBS. We can see UBS reported a net loss of $785 million in the third quarter due to the cost of integrating Credit Suisse. This loss was nearly double to $444 million that analysts had forecast. UBS stated that it would have reported profits of worth $844 million in the third quarter if it hadn't been for over the $2 billion in expense linked to the emergency takeover. So we know that, again, this takeover wasn't healthy and it's obviously affecting UBS and it could ultimately make UBS go down the same path as Credit Suisse, as Arcagos, and we can see how that obviously has a domino effect. The only reason why UBS is able to cling on right now is because of the fact we know that Credit Suisse is on the counterparties for reverse repo, and they have access to billions of dollars, which is helping them right now to barely clench on with their swaps of GME and AMC. And again, that's why we keep a close eye. Once that reverse repo go to zero, then Credit Suisse will have no easy money to borrow. They will have to find other ways, and that's when we will see a fire sale of assets that's when we'll see the covering of lost assets of lost positions or potentially the swaps and shorts they have of amc and gme and that's what we are waiting for now more on term in terms of you know something that's big is the ftd so ftd's uh, february 2nd 2024 we saw 30.63 billion in treasury settlement failures at the dtcc so now this brings the yearly ftd total to 588 million uh, billion dollars weekly treasury ftd to 152 billion and daily treasury ftd averaged to 25 billion dollars now this is what we're seeing right now the fact we're seeing treasury settlement failures obviously shows the positions that firms are in that people clearly aren't having the ability to obviously pay back hence why it is list, um, leading to a, a massive uh, excess amount of ftd failure problem that's obviously happening right now and again this lets us clarify plenty of things firstly it allows us to understand is that the ftd issues is becoming way bigger than what we think but it also indicates that clearly people who are dealing with this are in the best position in terms of cash in terms of settling otherwise we won't see this problem and that means if that if they're not good on capital what we can be seeing like we said ultimately is the fire sale of assets and again the file of a file sale of assets will mean many things. Either they will sell their existing assets to make cash, they will sell their lost positions, they will sell, um, you know, they, they will cover their positions and plenty of things. And that obviously will lead to the squeeze of AMC. Now, something that is, um, I think that is very interesting and I'm sure everyone wants to pay attention to this. What we got from Frank Place is writing a letter right now. And this is talking about the reduction of margin requirements during a period of high market volatility in order to protect clearing members from default. So recently we've seen this, um, the OCC proposing a regulation modification, which is to help um, hedge funds and clearing members essentially to that in times of need, they can reduce the margin requirements. Therefore, they don't have to default. Essentially, what you can understand for this is if normally AMC were to go to $5,000 right now, and this will lead to the default of every AMC short sellers, which will obviously lead to a squeeze. And that threshold is $5,000. But by proposing this rule, and if this rule obviously get passed, it means that if AMC were to go to $5,000 right now, and they know that it's high market volatility, then the margin requirement goes up and the AMC will need to go to $10,000 or $15,000 in order for the squeeze to actually happen. And that's what they are doing right now. And you know what we can see is the proposed reduction in margin requirements to protect clearing members may inadvertently heighten risk for the ODC uh, and broader financial system. The use of over 200 in instances of um, idiosyncratic control settings in less than four years raises concerns about their consistency, necessity, and potential impact on market integrity. The rules create an uneven playing field where clearing members repeatedly benefit from reduced margin requirements, disadvantaging armor market participants. Additionally, the proposed appears to make clearing members, even those poorly managing risk de facto too big to fail, 
posing potential risk to the stability of the financial system. And again, you can see how this will obviously protect the institutions and hurt the uh, retail investors again. And this is what we're talking about in terms of how they clearly are scared of the AMC squeeze and they, they understand the fact that it's very likely for many firms who are affiliated with these shorts to be defaulting and that's why they need margin requirements because margin requirements by reducting it not only again stops or slows down the squeeze of amc because of what we talked about in terms of the threshold going from five thousand to ten thousand but also they are able to then actually use even less money to suppress more amc because now the margin requirement for um, their position has gone down it means they have more disposable income to then short that particular stock again to short amc or gme or whatever again to make sure the price doesn't go up any further and that's what they're doing anyway guys thanks for watching the video i'll catch you guys next time